Good morning, everyone. This is Dan. Welcome to Engelgeist. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. This is the daily forecast for all signs. It is a broad spectrum collective reading, so I'll use it in broad terms. You need to figure out if and where it fits in your life, if at all. It is um, originally created for Monday, the 14th of November. It is not solely set for that date, though. Um, if you're seeing it on a different day and it still makes sense to your situation, by all means, if it's not making sense or doesn't seem to fit with your situation, that's okay. It doesn't mean anything's broken or wrong. You just might be working on something different at this time. Please check out the drop down menu underneath any of my videos. In there is information on what decks I'm using, how to contact me via social media for a private reading. And easy ways to support the channel. Also, things I want you to think about when utilizing the channel. Easy ways to support the channel. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoy the content. Subscribe. Um, share the video out. Uh, leave me a question or comment. All that stuff greatly helps. So, I will be referring back to cards from Sunday Underpinning Energy. That's the weekly reading that shows like kind of what's going on in the background behind some of these cards. So, if I am referring to cards that you don't see... Please, by all means, check out that video. It does populate in the lower left-hand corner of this video at the end of it. So let's see what's going on. What do we need to know? So our card for the is the Eight of Swords. Okay. So Eight of Swords is about feeling trapped in our mind and our thoughts, maybe in the way that we communicate, feeling limited in a way, feeling like we don't know which direction to take, which way to go. Eights are about finding balance, though, right? Even in the midst of, say, adversity. The one thing that I love about this particular Eight of Cups in this deck, I mean Eight of Wands, uh, Eight of Swords, Jesus, is that it feels like she's taking two of the swords and like almost clearing a path through her thoughts, through her communications. She's not letting maybe her negative thinking, limited thinking, or fear, anxieties get in her way. She is the end of our, uh, she was, this card shows up as the end of the week card um, in the underpinning energy of the Sunday readings. So the reason, the feeling that I'm getting when I see this right now is it's like we need to start working on these thoughts, uh, worries, anxieties, fears, now. Um, underpinning this is the Five of Pentacles from the Sunday reading. And the Five of Pentacles is always sort of like this at a loss, being left out in the cold card, right? Feeling like we're losing something, maybe materially, a relationship or a situation. We might be feeling like we're being pushed out. I don't necessarily know that that's the case. I think that it could be all mental for us. Um, and we could be creating it on some level, and so we need to be aware of that. What I love about this card in particular, too, is that these planets are lining up behind her, right? In the sky behind her. Like, there's also other forces involved in this that want to support and help initiate the change that we need to be able to move forward. The blue in this woman's dress always makes me think of joy, and then the sash being pink makes me think of the heart. Even though we're blindfolded here in this card, we may not know which direction to go or what answer to take, what um, thing to communicate, or what maybe even what thought is correct or right. It says to me, like, listen to your heart, listen to your compassion, listen to your joy and follow that, even if it doesn't seem possible. Take the thoughts that limit you or the communication that's limiting you right now and find a way to free yourself from it. Find a way to find balance within it and set about, like, freeing yourself so that you can move forward. Empowered. You are supported, is my feeling, right? The five of pentacles underneath this says that, you know, what's going on around us or what we're feeling, sensing, thinking about, and even how it's manifesting, possibly physically, may feel limited, but I don't feel like that's the truth. I feel like the truth lies within. That's the blindfold that this woman is holding. We need to look at the thoughts, perceptions, and beliefs that we hold within our mind and that we're communicating either on an energetic level or a mental level in our thoughts, even if we're not verbally voicing them, and, and figure out how to find balance within those thoughts and line them up correctly or uh, appropriately so that we can get ourselves to that joy, to that place where we want to be, right? So I also feel an extreme amount of empowerment in this card as she wields these two swords behind her, right? She feels like 
she's really like doing the work, looking at herself um, and finding sort of like a, you know, this blue color of her dress says to me, she's finding a joy or an exuberance in the challenge of, okay, this isn't working for me. So what is going to work for me? What do I need to let go of? What do I need to rework? What do I need to rethink or recommunicate to get to that place of freedom? And I think that this is sort of the theme of this week, both emotionally, mentally, and even physically, there might be a freedom that we're trying to attain. Remember the grounding stone for this week is about our desires. Are we in alignment with our desires is the question. You know, and that's where we need to be looking at our thoughts and our beliefs and uh, aligning them to our desire. Let's look to the Hip Hop Queen's Oracle. So we have Gangsta Boo. She's back. Confidence. You know, all that money around her chest, all that like material wealth or, or prosperity and that big gold chain. She's, she's, she knows what she wants. She's, uh, you know, maybe being a little bit mute, but cute while doing it and being confident in what she needs. Right. So there is, whoops, I'm knocking everything over. There is a confidence that we need as we do this work through this eight of swords, right? There is this confidence that we may need to display and trust within ourselves so that we can move forward. Let me read you Gangsta Boo's story. I also love Gangsta because she will cut a bitch and Boo because Boo is like, you know, your love. So uh, we might have to be, I almost feel like we might have to be tough but loving through this process with ourselves. Like, and I mean tough in the sense of don't give up. Don't let like your limiting thoughts take over. Fight your way through it. Be sweet to yourself. Be the pink, uh, the pink compassion that's in this sash here. Understand that there is success. There is, you know, the five of pentacles would indicate being left out in the cold materially, but we're not, is my feeling. We have to have confidence as we move through this. So here's Gangsta Boo's story. As a teenager, Gangsta Boo helped put Memphis hip hop on the map as one of the founding members of the Three Six Mafia. Her solo debut album, Inquiring Minds, hello, Minds, and the mental realm, the Eight of Swords, was anchored by the classic Where Dem Dollars At and set the bar for Southern rap queens looking to weave sexuality with hard verses. Collaborating with fellow 3-6 affiliate LeChat was a, a perfect balance of yin and yang where both brought unique strengths to the table. But Gangsta Boo's later solo recordings pushed hip-hop sound barriers, mixing menacing trap beats with electronic elements. Taking risk, uh, uh, that, sorry, that risk taking... That risk-taking comes from believing in yourself, your craft, and your worth. For that reason, you can bet your bottom dollar Gangsta Boo will always make you holler and stack the Benjamins accordingly. Gangsta Boo's card reflects a need to give yourself a pep talk. Sometimes we sleep on ourselves, but let, let this serve as your official wake-up call. It happens. We're thrown off course and struggle to get back on track. By the time you're ready to do it, you've started second-guessing yourself. Then anxiety sets in, a vicious cycle, and only you can break it. Take a page from the blueprint and say, it's time to try something new. If you believe you can do it, you will, plain and simple. So that's this idea of feeling trapped in our thoughts or in our, you know, where we think we're at versus where we can be mentally. I feel like Gangsta Boo is reminding us to be confident in the fact that we can do this work and we can grab two of these thoughts, these ideas, these swords and clear a fucking path for ourselves. <laughs> like make it happen and believe you know where are we limiting ourselves where are we holding back these dollars you know like no more man like let's have some fun let's be cha let's challenge ourselves to think outside of the box or re assess our thoughts and feelings around a situation so that we can move forward because we can and we can do so in joy and compassion and in putting ourselves first as we do it. It's not, there's nothing selfish or wrong about that, if that makes sense. Let's go to the clarifiers. And the first card out is the Knight of Wands, a nice Knight of Swords. All right. So we're talking about, you know, maybe feeling a little bit trapped and trying to find that answer the knight of swords would indicate finding that answer finding that truth that um that new thought coming in and coming in quickly you know um uh coming in rushing in and changing maybe how we um think about the past versus the now and i say that because the knight of swords is positioned towards the past but he's always rushing forward and he's a fast moving energy there is a clarity with him there's a loyalty there's a service there's a 
an arrival and a protection that comes with the night. So there is an opportunity here to find this new thought. And it almost feels like to me, this night is bringing it to us. If we have any past related beliefs that we're placing on a present time situation that feels limiting and we're like, oh, this is just going to be the same of what I've already experienced. I've been through this before. I know this. We may not. There might be something new or some new confidence within us that we need to pull out and find so that we can move forward in a way that's victorious. He feels very victorious to me, like he's cutting through the bullshit. The next card is the Ace of Wands. Speaking of newness, guys, this is that desire in the desire stone that we saw for the week, right? What is it that we want? How is it that we want it? If we feel like it's outside of our grasp or not within it, uh, not within our reach, it is. The Ace of Swords also speaks to new, um, new desire, new opportunities, new things being presented to us, right? So when we get this clarity from the Knight of uh, Swords, I think that we somehow utilize it to transform it into this Ace of Wands new beginning, new desire, new relation, new way of associating with a situation, person, or thing right? And in doing so, a new chapter begins. Unexpectedly, maybe, out of nowhere, but we have to be willing to do the work. We might have to be a little bit uncomfortable in the beginnings of it. This week's uh, Sunday reading felt a little bit kind of, they were all minor arcana, which says it's not like the biggest thing in the world, but they all felt like inner work to me. And I think that what that inner work does is it opens doors and creates uh, pathways for us to find new opportunities that are bigger, right? And that's what this Ace of Wands also represents. And then the last card, get it, bitch, is the Empress. <laughs> Y'all know how I feel about the Empress. I'm very much associating myself with the Empress and the Divine Feminine lately. The Empress is that confidence that Gangsta Boo has. She's that mix of, you know, Gangsta and Boo. You know, she'll be sweet and loving and, and all of that nurturing. She's associated with the planet Venus, which is love and compassion. She's connected to her earthly realm. She's connected to fertility. That could be fertility in ideas, thinking, um, action, creativity, all of that. She knows what she deserves. She knows what she wants. And she knows how to make it happen from a place of love. But we have to also remember to be kind to ourselves, too, while we go through this process. I like that she shows up because yesterday we had that King of Pentacles. And to me, she's very connected to the earth and to the Queen of Pentacles. And, and she's on a bigger level, right? So... There is this um, honoring that needs to take place within ourselves as we do this work that we deserve this. We can have this. Um, we can make this happen, but we have to trust that we're worthy. We have to trust that and have the confidence that we um, know how to make it happen, know how to like unlimit ourselves, know how to like grab two swords and disco dance our way out of this shit. If that makes sense, right? Now, here's the grounding stone. It is on carnelian. It has this white swirl that I always associate with spirit, which is like the planets lining up, that outside support that wants to support us in finding these answers and starting these new beginnings and embracing this empress divine feminine energy, right? And embrace would be the empress's energy. She would embrace. She's about fertility, nurturing, mothering right? We want to embrace ourselves through our own confidence. We want to embrace even the negative thoughts that we might be struggling with or the limitations that we've maybe placed upon ourselves in our mind and uh, allow ourselves through that embrace or through that love to accept them and then ultimately change them through finding a newfound confidence or a new awareness of who we are, what we deserve, and allow that knight of swords to rush in and change maybe our thoughts from the past and, and no longer allow ourselves to place them on the desires of our future if that makes sense. I think that makes sense. Uh, to me, this is about owning who we are, what we want, and freeing ourselves and, and embracing all of it during the process. That is your reading for the day. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Share the video out. Leave me a question or comment in the question in the comment section. And please, please, please subscribe to the channel. Help me grow my audience. Have a wonderful day and live in your divine feminine empress energy. It's powerful.